Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1407. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1407 finished file or the start file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, back in Excel Magic Trick 1405, we saw how to create a monthly revenue and add cost report. But the sales numbers were from a table that had daily sales. And the add costs were from a table that had end of the month amounts. Well, for formulas, it was easy because we could point our formula to the right table. Notice there's the criteria. The formula is pointing to the sales table. Over here for add costs, there's the criteria. But we're allowed to simply point to a different table to summarize. Now, in the comment section below 1405, Matt asks, how do we do the same report but in a data model pivot table using DAX measures? Now, the trick for a pivot table in using the data model is that these two formulas are going to be looking at this condition or criteria. These two formulas will see all of the dates in January, January 1st, 2017, all the way to January 31st, 2017. But both formulas will be looking at the same table, whereas over with formulas, we were allowed to just point the formulas to different tables. The point is, both these formulas need to see that criteria and somehow calculate the correct number. No problem. It's actually going to be pretty straightforward. We just have to create a date table. And then from the sales table, connect through a relationship the date over to the first column in our date table with a unique list of dates, and then do the same for end of the month for our cost table, build a relationship between end of month and the first column in our date column. Then it's as simple as dragging the month and year into the row area and summarizing with a simple sum function, add costs and sales. Now I'm going to close this finished workbook, and we're going to go over to the start file. So the key for us is going to be building this date table and then importing all three tables, creating the relationship, and then using a simple sum. All right, it's easy to create a date table in Excel. I've already put the field names at the top, and there's the first date. Now, I had to look through each one of these data sets and make sure I have the earliest date possible. And for a date table, you have to have a complete list of every single date from whatever the min to max would be in each one of your tables. All right, so I put 1-1-2017. One, one, now watch this. I'm going to take my selection cursor and point to that little green fill handle. And when I see my selection cursor turn to a cross, hare, or angry rabbit, I'm going to right click. So I'm right clicking. I'm going to drag down one cell, then back up and let go of the right click. And up pops a secret menu. I point to Series. Now I want to fill this series of contiguous dates down a column. So I select Column. Step value one day at a time. And check this out. There's the stop value. I simply put 12-31-2018. And when I click OK, boom, there's all of the dates. Now we're going to need month number. And we'll see why in just a moment. Month. That looks at a serial number date, and we'll report 1 to 12, Control-Enter. Actually, I should have hit Tab. I'm going to hit Tab. Now we're going to need the name of the month. So in Excel, we use text. It looks at a value. Remember, all dates have serial number values underneath, comma. And then we have to know the custom number format for showing the month name. Well, luckily, of all the custom number formatting, Dates are the easiest. M is for month, D is for day, and Y is for year. So if we want to see a three-letter abbreviation, we simply, in double quotes, put three Ms. Close parenthesis, and now I'm going to hit Tab. The year equals year function. It looks at that serial number. Date, Control-Enter. Now I'm going to highlight all three formulas and double-click and send it down. Go to the last cell, Control-Down Arrow. F2, Shift-Tab, F2, Shift-Tab. I'm checking to see if each formula is working. It's looking good. Control, up arrow. Now, we have to convert this to an Excel table to get it into the data model. So I go up with one cell in the table selected. I go up to 
insert table or simply use the keyboard control T and enter. Now I need to get each one of these into the data model. So I go to power pivot and with one cell selected, I click add to data model. I can see there's the F sales, alt tab. This is the F add costs. Click in one cell, add to data model. There's our two tables. Alt tab, click in one cell in the date table. Ooh, I can't believe I almost forgot to do this. The most important thing when you're using Excel tables, design, properties, that is a terrible table name. You always want to name your table because the name of the table is used in formulas over here in Excel and over in the data model. So I'm going to call this D date and enter. Now I have a single cell selected, power pivot, add to data model. I have my three tables. Now I go over to the home ribbon view, diagram view. I see my three tables. And look at this. We're going to have two fact tables. And there's one date table. Now to create a relationship, I simply drag. And remember, date has a unique list in the first column here. I'm going to drag it over to the end of the month. Now there's a one to many relationship. There's exactly one of each date here. But over here, we have multiple end of the month dates. That allows us, when we filter this table, to have the filter go through the relationship and filter down just to the actual add cost amounts we want. Now we do the same thing for our second fact table. So I'm going to click on date and drag it over to date. This is a one to many. There's a unique list of dates here. One day may have potentially many sales over here. When we filter this table, for example, when we filter on January 2017, all of those dates will pass through here. Well, there's only one date here, so the end of the month in January will show. But when the filter gets passed through this relationship, all the days, and we potentially have sales on all of those days, but this table will be filtered down just to sales for January. All right, now we need to go back to data view. And I'm going to choose to make our measures on the F sales. So I click on F sales, drag up the divider between the table and then what's called the measure grid. We click in the measure grid, and we can create our DAX measure. Now we simply start typing the name of the measure. Total, I immediately get shot up to the formula bar. Total revenue, and we have to use a colon and then an equal sign, and then we put whatever formula we want. We want a simple sum. So I type sum, open parentheses, F, S to get to the F sales, and then down arrow to sales, close parentheses. So when you have a DAX measure, everything before the colon and equal sign will be the name that shows up in our field list. Everything after the colon and equal sign is our formula. And whenever we have columns, we have to put table name, and then in square brackets, the field name, Enter. Now here's a great thing about DAX measures. I can add number formatting to this formula. So I'm going to click on English United States. That number formatting will follow this formula around. Now let's do the same thing for total. Shoots me up here. Add cost, colon, equal sign, sum, type F. And I immediately see from the first item in my list, add cost table. And then in square brackets are add cost. Close parentheses, Enter. Add some number formatting. Now, we're done over here. And you can come back over to Diagram View and see, sure enough, the measures are added to this table. We could have just as easily put them down there. Below, we could have put total ads up there, total sales here. But I put them both in the same place. In fact, just to make sure that we don't accidentally drag date from here, and we only want our dates from the date table, watch this. I'm going to click on the first date, hold Control, click on Sales, because I don't want anybody dragging sales either. I only want to use my measures. Right click Hide from Client Tools. Over here in the Add Cost, I'm going to click on Add Cost ID, Control, and click on End of the Month. Right click Hide from Client Tools. Not only that, but we don't need month number. We'll see why we need it, but we don't need it over in our field list. So right click Hide from Client Tool. Now let's Alt-Tab. 
I'm back in Excel. I want to create a new pivot table from the data model. So I click in the cell I want the pivot table to go in. Go up to Insert, Pivot Table, or use the keyboard Alt-N-V. Because we have a data model, it assumes we want to use it as our source. It already has the correct cell right there. So I click OK, or simply hit Enter. I'm going to scroll over. And check this out. If we look at each one of our tables, we only have the fields that we want. Now, we want year. So I'm going to drag year down to rows. Then we want month, and we're going to run into trouble here. We're going to drag month down to rows. Uh-oh, it's sorting alphabetically. No problem. Alt-Tab over to Data View. And I need to go down to D-Date, so I'm in D-Date. And I need to tell this month name column to please sort by a different column. And that different column will be month number. So the reason we had month number here is so now January will be associated with 1, and it will appear first in our sorted list. So when I click OK, now April, of course, is 4. So when I Alt-Tab, there we go. April's in the fourth position. I don't like this layout, so I go over to Design, Layout, Report Layout, Show in Tabular. Now, this is the magic. We have our two formulas, total revenue. I drag down to values. Look at that, including the number formatting. And total ad costs, boom, it's working just like our formulas. Now, each one of these measures, remember, those are formulas. They're actually looking at a filtered date table showing only January. Here, it's only February. So if we go back over the data model, diagram view, in that pivot table cell, this table behind the scenes in the columnar database is filtered down just to January. That passes through here. And since 1-31-2017 are the only dates here, this table is filtered down just to those three costs. Here, all the dates for January 2017 are passed. That filters this table. Now, we don't have a big data set, but that is fundamentally the reason that this data model, DAX measures, and relationships calculate so quickly on big data, because when the tables are filtered down to a smaller data set, faster calculating. Alt-Tab, there you go. How to do revenue and add costs from two different tables, but with the data model, pivot table, DAX measures, and relationships. All right, we'll see you next video.